Just to quickly answer the question posed by the title, can you use saltwater electrolysis to etch the copper off of a copper-clad board to make a PCB? Yes, you can. Should you? Uh, no, you shouldn't. So refer to my previous videos about electrolysis for the full explanation, but the summary is you have water and salt. Salt is sodium and chlorine, and when salt is dissolved, it makes positive and negative ions. So you put electrodes and power between them in the water, with the salt, in the salt water. One electrode attracts the sodium, one electrode attracts the chlorine, and thus you get current transfer, and electricity flows through. Additionally, the water separates into hydrogen and hydroxide, which is also attracted to one electrode or the other. Normally, doing this alone is going to produce hydrogen gas and chlorine gas, but if your positive electrode is copper or another similarly etchable material, instead of the chlorine making chlorine gas, the chlorine grabs onto the metal, rips it off, and then the metal separates, combines with hydroxide, and drops to the bottom, and thus the metal is removed. So you can etch metal with salt water and a battery. So here I have a copper clad board. In order to mask it, because you have to have something that prevents part of the metal from being etched, it's wherever you want metal to still be afterward, I used permanent marker. I used several different permanent markers, different nib sizes, and then I soldered on this clip because you have to have electrical connectivity. That's the real trick to this. The electricity has to go into the metal. The metal has to be positively charged to attract the negative chlorine ions or chloride ions. And so I'm putting a positive charge, the positive end of the battery, here and here, soldered onto the copper, because you don't want to just use alligator clips because it's going to etch your alligator clips. So you want to attach wire in some way. You could drill holes or whatever, but soldering is nice and stable. You know, don't put something in the water you don't want etched because that's the whole point of this. So this is just expendable copper wire. And then here's a trick. To make the masking work better, I have a heat gun. You could use a hair dryer or whatever, but you want the permanent marker to be completely dry. So I used a heat gun and I ran it over and just super fast dried everything. Or you can leave it for a week or you can use a hair dryer or whatever, put it in the oven. Just some way to make sure it's completely and totally dry. The usual method is to use a laser printer and some sort of glossy material like a magazine and iron it on. That's the usual mask transfer method, but I decided to do this just to test. And then here's a little battery pack I ripped out of something and I've got alligator clips. So this is going to be 1.5 volt D cell batteries. So 4.5 volts, just for fun. This is after it's been sitting a while. So here's the board. You can see the two wires. It's in there. The positive charge is here. The negative is here. This piece of metal is just the other electrode. It doesn't etch. This one just stays there. It gets deposits on it. These deposits, I think this was the solder. The solder here, I think that was the solder being etched and like flux and crap. And I don't know how lead, because it's lead and tin in there. But this is not copper. This is not supposed to happen. So be aware of that. If you solder them on like I did, you're going to get this crap. It was accumulating on this electrode. All I did was shake it. You just, you just grab it and shake it a little bit and it just floats right off. The orange here is copper because the reaction is ongoing. It hasn't settled. This is after I let it set for a while. So here's salt, undissolved salt. Here's copper and here's copper oxide. So there you go. I don't know. It must have overflowed when I wasn't looking. This is just salt. But this is after it's been sitting a while. One word of advice. Make sure you have dissolved as much salt as possible. Don't worry about all this unused salt. You can reuse the solution. And salt is cheap. It's just table salt. Salt doesn't cost that much. So... Ideally, what you do is you take the water, you heat it up, just put it in the microwave for a little bit, warm it up so it dissolves better, and just keep putting salt in. If there's no extra salt, there's not enough salt in the water. More salt, the better. Because remember, this is chemical. It's literally atoms of salt, sodium and chlorine, and hydrogen and oxygen floating around, interacting with electrodes. That, that's the charge carry through this. So the more 
atoms are floating around, the better your reaction will be. The other piece of advice, do not leave this unattended. If you want to leave this overnight, use a real power supply. Use an actual power supply, like a wall wart, your bench power supply, something. This, these batteries got hot. They were delivering a lot of current, and they never got dangerously hot. They were perfectly fine, but they got hot, which means yours might get too hot. Do not leave batteries unattended during this. It's fine if you're just in the other room, but don't go to sleep or leave the house. If you're going to do that, use a real power supply. So this is the end result of the electrodes. See, it etched so much that it dissolved. <laughs> this metal detached. And then this is the other end. See, it's just got the deposit on it, but it's perfectly fine. This is the bubbling. If you see bubbling here, you're doing it right. If the bubbling is on your board, that is bad. Stop it immediately. You are doing it backwards. The bubbling should be on the sacrificial piece of metal. Well, not sacrificial. You just reuse it. But the thing you're etching should not have bubbles. This should have bubbles. If both sides have bubbles, turn it off immediately because you're making chlorine gas and you're committing a war crime. So here's the end result. And you can see it worked. It actually worked. But here's the problem. Conductivity. As the metal is etched away, it loses electrical contact. And here's a better example of it. This is with light shining behind. You can see, here's the mask. You got the big old thing here, the squigglies, little squigglies, and all this. And it worked. It absolutely worked. Here's the big squiggly. Here's the little ones. It would work better if you didn't leave it in quite as long, because you could see it actually started etching underneath the mask in places. But you really see the pattern. You have these little islands, especially, you know, like here. And then here a little bit where I think I dipped it in the salt a little bit. But the reason that this turned out to be, in my opinion, a failed experiment is because there wasn't a way to maintain electricity to all of the copper I wanted to get rid of. So... As it would etch away, it would stop etching. Fundamentally, if you could maintain electrical contact to every single thing you want to etch, like this little bit and this little bit and this little bit and this side, this side, if you could maintain contact with every single piece you want to still be there, then what would happen is everything that's not masked would etch away just enough. And then you would leave contact only with the things you wanted to keep. And then you just have to turn it off soon enough. That, however, is way too much of a bother. So etching like this works great when you are dealing with a piece of metal that you literally want to etch, traditional etching, where you want it to be like sunk in a little bit, but the whole piece of metal is still there, because then nothing ever loses conductivity. So my end recommendation is this method doesn't really work well. Keep it for jewelry and handicrafts. The reason that acid etching works so much better is acid etching is uniformly covering the whole surface at all times. So at that point, you just leave it in long enough and it will etch away every single thing you don't want and you just take it out before it etches under the mask. But you can you can very clearly see the patterns and some of these traces might still work. Like, like this one, this one I bet would work just fine. But yes, it's an educational failure. It's cool to understand why this happened, even if the end result is don't do this. So that's all for now and I'll be seeing you.